Hello, welcome to Unrestricted View Horror Festival. Meet the filmmakers. I have with me. I am David Bryan. I'm the writer, director, producer, a few other things, made the sandwiches on uh, Kindred. See, one of the wonderful things about indie filmmaking is you learn to do everything, right? Yeah, especially sandwiches and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, you literally are doing everything, kind of uh, buying costumes. You, you do do every role. You kind of uh, you get used to it, and that's, it's kind of just... It's kind of the the fun part, really. You kind of get to do every every role on it. It's tiring, but it's but it's yeah. it's always fun. Yeah. Um, how long did it take to shoot Kindred then? Just out of Kindred was an odd one. It was it was supposed to be originally we were going to kind of do one block of filming, say of of about ten days. Um, we were going to kind of it was it's kind of one main actor and then actors coming in and out. So we kind of planned that. But we found we couldn't really do it in one week. So we shot over several weekends that actually went to over a year, basically. So we're kind of, um, I kind of had to keep, it was filmed in my house. So I had to keep putting all the sort of decorations, the, the set design back together and then taking it down, putting it back together. And we, we just kind of filmed it around everyone's schedule. The, um, the camera, uh, the DP camera guy, he kind of could only come certain times because it was all, all very much when people weren't doing other stuff, their nine to fives and, and their jobs that we could do this. So it was kind of, it was a lot of juggling of, of everyone's kind of schedules to get everyone the same weekends. And it, it ended up, yeah, taking about a year of kind of weekends to get everyone, to get all of it shot. Yeah, it's, um, I think that's something that people don't always get with indie filmmaking is quite how much juggling and how much effort goes into it because you're not the first um, director that's told me they've had to make a film over a year shooting on yeah. weekends again just to fit people's schedule because there's no money. I mean, like the money or the money that you do have is very, very, very tight. Um, so you do rely on a lot. Of, you, you rely on a lot of good faith. I mean, exactly. Yeah. And crew and like they're all putting basically a lot of time goes in for nothing. I mean, free time to, to produce something that's very worthwhile, which obviously Kindred is. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, exactly. It's kind of, um, it's because you can't interrupt people's lives really. Because like you say, you're not, you're not paying them enough to say, oh, take a, take a few days off and come and work with us because you're not paying them anything. So they've kind of got to do the paid work and then fit you in around that schedule and you have to work around that. And it's, it kind of, it's tough, but that's kind of a, the way it has to work. And, you know, people can drop out last minute and you just have to work around it. You've got to be kind of, you've got to be free to work around them rather than you kind of setting your kind of, you could be very, Oh, I need you here now to shoot this scene, but you know, they can't be. So you kind of have to, you're, you've got to be the one who can play with your schedule and, and work around everyone. You've got to be good at playing with yourself. Yeah. Which, yeah, obviously I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, um, well, I suppose all that work that actually does go into it, that must make it very, very satisfying when you get the end product. Yeah, again, it takes it takes a long time, and you kind of. I mean, the the good thing actually with doing the weekends and over a long period of time is because you can edit between these kind of filming weekends. You can see what's not working and what is working, and you can go back and fix stuff. You can reshoot shots. You can do so. So that actually works very much in favour because if you shot one block, there's. You, it's unlikely you can go back and reshoot many scenes or additional shots, maybe a few here and there. Whereas we were allowed, we, we were able to kind of go back and fix whole scenes and stuff. Some some weekends with squeezing where where we thought it wasn't working, we could do this, do that. So so it actually kind of worked out in in, in our favour in the in the long run. That's fascinating. But but finishing the finished product, yeah, is the best thing. I mean, obviously, we all work to actually have the finished film. You know, it's. Yeah. it's kind of it's hard work when you do it sometimes you just feel like oh i don't know if i can get through this uh but when you see that finished film that's that's the goal that's the that's that's what we're all in it for yeah so now we've been talking about the making of the film and how much effort goes into it um, yeah everybody involved and it is like it i mean i suppose that's an, that's a really beautiful thing about indie filmmaking as well it's such a major team effort and it's you know you, you're kind of all bond because you're working so hard to get it um, so we talked about that. Tell us about the film, Dave. 
So the film, uh, the film itself is, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a psychological thriller. Um, I actually prefer to call it a psychological chiller because it has a lot of horror in it. Um, so and it's, it's basically a very, um, a story of one man. It's a, a man who is, um, who is agoraphobic. So he, he literally cannot leave his house or will not leave his house. So it's, it's quite timely at the moment, actually, where we're all under lockdown. So it's a guy kind of stuck in his house. His family have been murdered and he's living with the memories and, and can't move past it, can't move on. And he's, he's got mental illness um, is a big part of the story. Kind of he's suffering from um, um, PTSD, really. And kind of he starts to see whether his family is still there in ghosts and shadows and, and it plays around with his mind. It's all very much in his head. Um, but we don't really know what exactly is going on and that unfolds, which I won't give away, obviously. But, um, <laughs> but it, it kind of plays with the supernatural um, as well as kind of more, more mental illness kind of uh, within it as well. So it kind of, it kind of has a realism while also fitting those paranormal it it, moments. It, that's one of the things we really liked about it, uh, is that, not, I'm not talking about myself as a we, the Royal We at Unrestricted. Yeah. Um, although, that's another, another day, David, another day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things we really liked about it is that it, it is quite unsettling in the best possible way. Yeah. We're never quite sure what, where it's going or what, you know, what's, what's real, because you can feel what he's going through. You, you know, you, you get a real good sense. What, I mean, one of the toughest things um, to do is play that well. And I think you've got, you've got a good cast together. It'd be, uh, yeah. Who, who played Jane Asher as well, David. Yeah, Jane, yeah, yeah. Very good friend of mine. Yeah. No, she's, um, no, we were really good to, I mean, the cast we put together, I mean, luckily, having made films in the past, I've kind of worked with a lot of the actors on other stuff. And then uh, Bill Fellows, the lead, he's kind of a, um, he, he lives quite locally to me and was a friend of mine and kind of we were looking for something to do together. So I kind of wrote the script with him to play the role. Um, and everyone just done great work. I mean, that's, that's the trick, I think, with the low budget thing as well, is pulling together a good cast and a really good crew, you know, as well. And kind of, and that's, that's how you, hopefully, we brought it above the, the usual kind of low budget. And I think uh, you, you touched upon it on something you said earlier. It, it's something that relates to people right now because, you know, the agoraphobia, we're all stuck, you know? Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think mental health now more than ever is, is really being challenged. It's really, su you know, people are suffering with mental health now because of what they've gone through in the past year um, and what we're still going through. So yeah. Um, it's something that's very relevant now I don't. I mean, it was pretty, it was relevant before, but now more than ever, it just feels like you've really kind of put it started putting it out there exactly the time that people are feeling those feelings and people can really connect with that character. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I think over the last ten years or so, so the, it's kind of been building up the whole issue of mental health, and I think, um, and I, I think, yeah, you're exactly right. This is this moment. I think people are struggling, you know, with the with the lockdowns. A lot of people on their own and stuck in their houses, literally. And um, and, we, and it just happens that we've, yeah, just, just completed it. Uh, I mean, the lockdown probably helped us complete it because we had more time to sort of finish it off with, yeah. with everyone kind of off work. But the, um, it's, it's, it seems it's just so timely that we've kind of finished it right now. And hopefully a lot of people will kind of get something out of it more than just you know, I, I like horror films that have a social kind of aspect to them. You know, even right back to Night of the Living Dead, you know, that all kind of, that, that have something beyond it being scares and a monster and stuff that have a relevance. And, and that's why I've tried to do with this anyway. And now it's, it's even more relevant. That's, that's where the horror comes from. It feels real. And I think people, you know, when people can connect to it and feel, oh, that's me. Well, I feel like that. And that's... Yeah for it even greater and even scarier because it feels like it could happen definitely you know, it like it, it, it could be a thing uh and that i mean so yeah I, I get completely where you're coming from i think you know when you when you've got a horror that's that could be 
that person down the road or it could be you or it could happen you you just feel that bit more of a chill it stays with you a little bit longer yeah and that, that, exactly you know I, I i just think i mean bill's performance is great and, and it keeps it grounded you know and, and even the location and stuff it just feels it feels totally realistic to me it feels kind of and that's what it's, it's almost kind of a little bit part kitchen sink drama you know like like we used to make years ago and it's kind of got a, so it's hopefully it is very realistic but then adds these sort of supernatural elements and and stuff to it that kind of you haven't hopefully you haven't seen too much before where did you get the idea from um i'm not it just you know i, I kind of get so many ideas but this one i i guess in a way i kind of tooled it for my first thought was to make i was wanting to make a feature with no money i knew i had bill on board and um i kind of thought i i mean my way of making this stuff was i know I, I can do it in one location what location can i do it in in a house and it kind of built up like that but the, the whole kind of mental illness thing was just because it was so in the news and that's where i kind of get my, my ideas from um it's kind of what is actually going on in the news and stuff that's that's where i you primarily kind of see what to make stuff about yeah, I mean, you, well, you did a great job on it. I mean, you and your, your whole team, the whole team did a fantastic job. Um, I think pe people can see the film on Thursday the 29th. Is that right? Thursday the 29th of October? That's right. Um, do check it out. You know, check and it's it. well worth it. It's, it's well worth it. seeing. It's worth it. It's a good film. You've done, you've done very well. Yeah. Um, and you managed, I think you did touch very well on, on what you aimed to do. I think you, you managed to do it. I think you pulled it off. Thank you. Um, and I do think a lot of people will, will relate to it. So well done. Well done to you and your team. Um, what are you working on next, David? Anything lined up? Um, I'm writing several things, um, all kinds of different stuff, actually. I've got scripts galore, but um, I'm not sure what I'm actually kind of working on next. I'm working with a couple of producers. Uh, we've kind of got a revenge, a female-led revenge kind of movie, again, which is quite, quite kind of timely and, and stuff. And... Uh, but we're trying to raise the cash for that, but you know that's the that's the hard part. So isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that that's what I'd really like to do next. And uh, but like I say, I've got uh, I've got several kind of in horror. I tend to work in genre stuff, so I kind of but all kinds of stuff really. So like I say, thriller and and horrors. But but that that's one we called Scavenger that I'm working on that that we hope may may get some some funding. Keep an eye on that. Yeah. Yeah. We might see it at one of the future festivals, right? Yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> get to meet you in person, David, which would be really good. Yeah. Well, that'd be good. That'd be good to meet up at some point. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, it's a shame. Yeah, it's such a shame we can't be there for the, for the screening, but. Well, hopefully, lots of people get to see it uh, via the online festival. Uh, again, like I said, well worth checking out. Um, Thank you. you see, David's a solid dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so please check out his film that's Thursday the 29th of October Kindred um, David thank you so much for joining me mate really appreciate it thank you it. thanks alright man Take and care. I'll buy you a beer soon look forward to it cheers alright And now, officially, Agatha Raising P.I. Champagne, everyone, it's launch time. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Olivia Witherspoon is dead. The key to the mystery is in that house. Ivy Hall. Unexplained paranormal activity on a grand scale. What's next? Vampires, zombies, little green men in flying saucers. Stay close. Perfectly safe with me.